right, I have 1245 Central, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you, everyone who has joined. Um, I am, uh, my name is Tanya Oliphant. I'm with BJC Healthcare, which is based in St. Louis, and I'm uh, my presentation is on transitioning to fluid, our experience with transitioning to fluid with HCM, iHub, and FSCM with a combination of fluid and classic stages. Um, I may not be able to see your questions as I go along, but I'll try to answer anything at the end um, or happy to, to follow up afterward as well. Um, and my contact information at the end of the slide, so uh, feel free to chat or email and I'll try to um, answer any questions. So um, what I'll cover today is just introductions. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the business need and objectives, um, talk about our guiding principles and some of the design decisions that we made. Um, I'll show you the home pages that we created, some of the common elements. Uh, I'll get a little bit deeper into the tiles that we use, um, talk about some of the content reference common elements and get a little bit deeper into those. Um, there are a lot of different ways to do some of the things that we did. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into how we did them just because I want to um, make sure I cover um, all of the different elements. So, um, but if you have questions, again, feel free to reach out. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Tanya Oliphant. I'm with BJC Healthcare as an ERP consultant. And um, my experience is with PeopleSoft as well as other um, software as a service applications. Um, as well as software as a service applications, I should say. A um, little bit about BJC. Um, like I said, we're based in St. Louis. Um, we have uh, hospitals in Missouri and Illinois. And we have about um, 32,000 employees. Uh, we're currently on 9.2, image 19, and people tools 85705. So a little bit of background and kind of where we were before. Oh, sorry, I'm seeing some comments that you can't hear me very well. Is this any better? Try to hold the microphone a little closer. Is this any better? Okay, I'll try to continue. Please let me know if you still have trouble hearing me. Um, so where we started, and I'll try to talk a little louder too. Um, where we started was um, with Classic, as you can see here, um, I have some screenshots of where we started. So whenever we first started out, um, we basically had uh, three different access points for our users. We had um, users logging into HCM, which is here on the right. We had users logging into finance in the middle and into interaction hub, or as it was called at the time, just portal um, on the left. So you can see um, slightly different appearance in the three, um, three screenshots. Thank you for the feedback that that's, the audio is better. I appreciate it. Let me know if, that, um, if it gets worse again. Um, so for various reasons that I won't get too deep into, we were not, so the original intention with our implementation was to have everyone go through one access point. Um, for various reasons that we had issues with that, so we had people logging into three different places. Um, the intention was to have people go into iHub and be able to access HCM, FSCM, and iHub content from there, but for various reasons, we had to have people go into the three different um, locations. So we had three different sets of security, three different um, presentations. Um, it was just a lot to manage. Um, people were confused about why some things were available and some, some uh, things were not. Um, additionally, um, any change, like however superficial, we needed to add a link. Um, we needed to add a document. We needed to get a developer involved. So um, we ended up having quite a backlog and um, some frustrated users. So part of the objective 
with our transition to fluid was not just to streamline um, and, and modernize the appearance of PeopleSoft, but it was also to reduce the home page maintenance from three versions to one. So around the same time, um, unified navigation was, um, was really uh, was introduced and we were able to take advantage of that in conjunction with fluid to make um, a single consolidated user experience. We wanted to update the look and feel. Um, like I said, make it more modern and mobile. We also wanted to shift the configuration responsibility and capability from the developers to the, more to the functional analysts. Obviously, we still need developers in some cases, but for the things that an analyst can do, we wanted analysts to be able to do it. We also really wanted to put the how-to and policy information close to where it was needed. So um, we had a bunch of quick reference guides that you really had to do a lot of clicking to find. So it wasn't close to where you were actually needing it. So we wanted to address that as well. Um, we also wanted to leverage configuration and content management to allow these um, how-to documents, policy documents, and news updates to be updated by business users without the ERP team intervening. So um, allow the business users to update what can be updated by them. And we also wanted to remove and reduce customization without losing functionality. So some of our guiding principles were to um, design according to Oracle's PeopleSoft Fluid UX standards. Um, this has some really good just kind of um, what it sounds like standards on, you know, how many tiles should you have on a homepage? Um, what, what makes the best user experience for a tile? Like what are, um, it also has some um, really helpful information about um, how the, the tiles and homepages work together. So I read that, um, use that as a reference point whenever you know, we were deciding you know, how many tiles do we have on a homepage? How many clicks deep do you wanna go? Um, we also wanted to have one set of homepage and tiles regardless of the access point. So we were not able to reduce the um, number of places a person could log in at the time. Um, so we still had three different access points. But we only wanted to have to maintain one set of homepages and tiles that would be used across the environments. We um, wanted to take delivered fluid pages when possible. Um, we knew we wouldn't be able to convert everything to Fluid all at once, but we wanted it to be, um, wanted to have a unified look and feel as much as possible. We also wanted logical organization of the portal by functionality. So we wanted, if somebody logged in, um, to be able to go straight to what they were looking for and have it be organized in a way that was logical and made sense to what they were trying to do. We also wanted to build in efficient redundancy, reducing the need for clicks. So um, one of the great things about um, the tiles and navigation collections is you can um, put, you can make copies and have um, have something in more than one place. So you don't have to remember where it was because it's where you are now. We also wanted to remove or reduce customizations wherever possible. So some of the design decisions that we made um, were to use fluid homepages with navigation collection fluid tiles um, to organize the links and wrap classic pages in a fluid container to present a unified appearance. Um, so we have a combination of classic and fluid pages. Um, we did keep two classic dashboards for at a glance detailed views in, um, and I'll get into that a little bit more in a little bit. And we used unified navigation and referenced remote nodes for presenting finance and supply chain content, as well as content management. Um, so I'll go over our, our home pages that we have. Um, the first two are for HCM end users. We call them my HR and my team. They're really um, our version of employee self-service and manager self-service. Um, they are actually built in HCM. So all of the home pages have a, a, a local node where they're actually built. Um, they are they reside in HCM. When we originally built them, we built them in Interaction Hub. Um, we had some issues with that. Um, so we ended up moving them to HCM. So even though they're in HCM, they're still accessible from iHub and FSCM without actually duplicating them through unified navigation. 
Uh, two more home pages that we have for the HCM centers of expertise, uh, HR business partners, which we just have called human resources and talent acquisition. Um, again, these home pages are also built in HCM. And again, they were originally built in iHub and we ended up moving them to HCM. But they are again, available from iHub or finance and supply chain as well. We also have our finance and supply chain functions, um, two home pages there, one for finance administration and one for supply chain management. Um, these two home pages are local to our FSCM environment. So um, most of our finance and supply chain users, they can log into either HCM or, or finance um, to access their functionality and see the same home pages either way. Uh, we also have a uh, content administration homepage that's used to manage content management, um, which is iHub functionality. We also have a workforce administration homepage that has payroll, uh, a payroll tile, a production support tile, and then we also have our uh, kind of, I, I called it niche power users. Um, we have workforce development consultants that really have kind of a hodgepodge of access needs across the system. So we have their functionality bundled into one um, navigation collection as well. And these are uh, local to HCM as well. So next I wanna get into some of the common elements that we have across home pages. Um, one of the things that we needed um, that our business was accustomed to having in the classic environment that we knew we wanted to carry over was a banner. Um, so we call it a banner. Um, it's just basically an image that links to, uh, uh, can be external content, content or internal content is just featured. It's kind of like company news, but, um, but a little different. Um, and we accomplished this with tiles. Um, and on the banner tiles, we basically, we set a limit of two at a time. Normally we have, we can have zero to, to two at once. Um, normally we don't have any banners unless there is something, some kind of campaign that's going on. Um, every year we have the same timing of our United Way campaign and our annual enrollment campaign. So we always have two um, banners going at that time. Um, the next common element is company news tiles. And this is iHub functionality. We also have quick links tiles. And uh, the, the heaviest usage we have, like the vast majority of our tiles are navigation collection tiles. Um, we also have a couple, as I mentioned, of classic, classic dashboard tiles. And we also use a very few delivered fluid tiles. Um, Oracle does deliver more fluid tiles than what we used, but we really wanted to put our own, um, our own spin on things. I'll get that into that a little bit more. Um, so next is a little bit of a deep dive into the banner tiles and what they are. These are regular fluid pages, so a regular tile with dimensions of one by two. And we use two different types. And here are some examples of our, our banner tiles. The idea is that it's a one-click link to the highlighted, either the external site or an internal functionality. Um, so examples of external sites would be our United Way campaign. Uh, we have a COVID-19 information site. We have um, annual enrollment. Every year we do a pre-enrollment banner where we highlight the, um, we have an informational website that's outside of PeopleSoft, but that banner just link, links straight to that website. And then when it's time to actually enroll in benefits, we switch that over to go to our benefits um, tile, which the first link on that is um, enrolling in benefits. So it takes you straight to benefits enrollment. Um, and some other examples, or another example besides annual enrollment for linking to internal functionality is our total reward statements. Every year when they come out, we highlight them by adding a banner to say, your total reward statement is here. Click here for more information. Um, one caveat with these is that they do not look good on small devices. Um, it, uh, you would think that the, um, since it's, it uses a scalable image that it would scale well, it does not. So we usually don't display them on small form factor. Um, 
I, again, I said I wasn't going to get too deep into the details, but just um, for the banner tiles, it is possible to um, upload the images yourself. Um, we use an SVG image, um, and here are the dimensions, and an online user can upload them to this path. Um, and then I'm getting a little bit deeper into um, creating a, a banner tile that's a link to an external site. Um, and I have the high level instructions on how to do that here. Um, I don't wanna spend too much time on it in the interest of getting to everything, um, but just to kind of explain why I'm doing it this way instead of using the tile wizard. Um, it's it's not very many steps to do it this way, and with the tile like with the tile wizard, you can link to an external site, but you have to create the content reference anyway. So I think this is less steps. Um, and really, um, like I said, I think I mentioned earlier, there's different ways to do things um, with structure and content. Um, we are the approach that we've taken is to do almost everything under um, people tools portal structure and content versus some of the other tools that are available um, so a couple things to mention here is that the valid from and to dates can be used to make the tile appear and disappear from the their assigned home pages on the set dates and you just have to choose the non people soft url type and enter the URL there. And then the security and fluid attributes are like any other tile. Um, we typically set external sites to open in a new window and navigation collections to replace the current window. And that's done on that fluid attributes tab. And then um, another banner tile that's a, a link to an existing navigation collection. It's the same navigation to create it, but the URL information um, on the content reference is a little bit different, or it's actually very different. Um, this is a PeopleSoft generic URL, and I have some details in here about, um, about what some of those um, elements in that URL mean. Um, again, you could use the tile wizard for this. We chose not to do that because using the tile wizard, you can't link to a navigation collection that you're already using for another tile. So we had we already had a total rewards tile that we used throughout the year. We just also wanted to create a banner that links to the same navigation collection. Um, so um, the next element is uh, the company news tile. And for this, we just took the delivered company news tile. Um, we did, um, obviously it's available in HCM and iHub. Um, through Unified Navigation. We did create copies of it for the different home pages. So we have, um, so that we can have company news is on my HR, TA news is on talent acquisition, and it has news that's specific to talent acquisition. Um, we have uh, my team news, which we actually didn't have at the time that we, um, we made this change. We introduced it later when we noticed that we were getting some requests to communicate information specifically to managers. Um, we we could have handled that in the with just using one company news tile, but uh, manage it through the audiences or the um, who has access to the news articles, but we found it um, a little bit easier and more straightforward to manage um, having the separate tiles for the separate audiences. And we also have, um, I should mention, an HR news tile that has information specific to human resources. Um, a couple things to, a couple other things to note here um, is that business user content administrators can maintain content here without analyst or developer intervention. I will say we do usually put the um, the pictures up for them um, or put the put the articles up for them but they can do this um, on their own as well. It's very easy. Um, it does take more clicks than banners, so it didn't fully replace our banners, but it is so easy that, um, that you know, we do use it quite a bit anyway. Um, it is only available, so in our environment, um, we have not managed to make uh, Interaction Hub or iHub content available outside the network. We only have HCM information exposed outside of our network. Um, so this is a, a disadvantage of that um, 
from our perspective as well. So that's sometimes a reason to use the banner instead also. So moving on to the quick links type of tile. Um, so I mentioned the fluid UX standards earlier and one of the recommendations there that I thought was very solid is not to have more than nine tiles per page. Um, this was really a struggle for us. Um, we, without, you know, burying any of our items deeper into the user interface, creating secondary home pages or anything like that. We really wanted everything to be only one click deep and we also didn't want to have a ton of tiles. So um, our solution to that was to create these quick links tiles um, for content that maybe didn't warrant a whole tile um, or it was just an external link that we wanted to be available to users like uh, my time is Kronos for us. Um, and that was one of our most used links. Um, and then the Total Rewards website, um, obviously also. And then the Help and FAQ is our um, quick reference guides that we have linked to within every tile, but we also wanted kind of a main, um, a, a main central location that people could use to get there. So the quick links tile saves homepage real estate without adding clicks. Um, it's technically, just a regular navigation collection tile, uh, but it has dynamic content on the fluid page for the links. So this is a navigation collection that we have made um, dynamic tile content on the fluid attributes. Um, and I'll mention here, I, I do reference the navigation collection tiles um, in several places. I think there is, um, there was a great presentation um, that someone did, I think, yesterday that's uh, creating navigation collection in 15 minutes. Um, and I know there's there are other tutorials and information on creating navigation collections that are really helpful. Um, but the one yesterday I thought was really good. Um, if you want to refer to that for creating a navigation collection tile. Um, just a little aside there. So I mentioned earlier that we have some classic dashboard tiles um, as well that we weren't able to get rid of yet. Um, basically, uh, manager dashboard and recruiting home are the two that we kept as classic dashboards. So you still click on a tile, as you can see, um, and it's a fluid tile to get there, but once you're there, it's wrapped in the fluid header, but it's still very much classic. Um, and the reason for that was really just um, we, we were already using these pagelets. We didn't see a a full replacement for them in fluid um, that would still give the recruiters and managers kind of the at a glance access to um, to everything they were used to seeing there. So we just uh, kept the classic dashboards um, and made fluid tiles for them. And for these, we just created content reference links to the delivered components. So then we get into the navigation collection tiles. We have um, we have so many of these. Um, they're really critical for tying everything together, especially whenever you have content coming from multiple um, places and you know maybe not logically organized in um, Navigator. And when you're going from classic to fluid, you miss your breadcrumbs. Um, so. Most of our navigation collection tiles do consist of combinations of delivered um, and custom fluid and classic pages. And yes, fluid pages look better than classic pages, but the classic pages, since they are um, putting them in the navigation collection, um, keeps them in that fluid wrapper. It's not as jarring as um, trying to reference them outside of the navigation collection. Um, and we typically have been able, we have, we really pushed to and were able to keep um, keep users within that navigation collection um, whenever possible. So we, we almost always have that left navigation present um, for the user so they can get back to where they were very quickly. Um, we even broke apart the delivered personal details fluid page you might be familiar with. Um, over here on the right, this is our version of it. Um, Oracle did deliver a personal details fluid page, um, but we wanted to put it in a navigation collection. Um, a big part of the reason that we wanted to do that um, was for this ordering that I mentioned here. 
um, we kept throughout all of our navigation and collection tiles um, have this convention where we put the actions or core people soft functionality in the section at the top. And then we have a section with related external links. You can see here um, uh, links related to benefits that are outside of PeopleSoft. Then we have any related HR policies, which is content management. And then we have any related help and FAQs. So this information is always just a click away and it's always um, kind of the user knows where to look for it. Now you can see um, I have all those ele elements and benefits, but on my personal details over here, we don't have any policies and we don't have any external links. So it's just to help an FAQ. So I wanted to go a little bit into um, some of the navigation collection tile common elements. Um, the organization of content references versus content reference links can get pretty tricky, um, especially if you want to offer users multiple ways to do the same thing. So you'll want to think about your approach to organizing the main content reference references and links. Um, there are a few types of content reference links, and I'll get a little bit deeper into these um, in the, the coming slides. Um, we have, of course, local links, which is links to regular local components and pages. We also have links to other related tiles. We have remote finance and supply chain links. Um, and we have remote content management links, which it falls into two categories. One is those folders with the help and FAQs and policies typically, um, as well as just a direct link to an HTML document. And I'll show you some of those. And then we also have non-PeopleSoft URL, URL links. So that would be something like those external websites. So the first, um, first type of link is link, links to local components or pages. So in our case, I'm, I'm on the HCM side. Um, we do have, as I mentioned, the finance and supply chain home pages that are built in finance and supply chain. And for those local, their local node is finance and supply chain. Um, the, the ones that I um, have worked most on are the HCM ones. So I'm talking from the perspective of HCM being local. So for all of the home pages that were built in HCM, um, I would go to HCM to manage the um, tiles that are on them. But I can reference external, um, external and other and content and other nodes. So if the content reference already exists in the local node, which is usually the case for your um, existing um, components and pages, it's best to just create a content reference link in the navigation collection and not create a brand new content reference. Um, if it doesn't exist yet and you need to create a new content reference link, you would have to decide whether to create it in the navigation collection or decide if it makes more sense for it to live somewhere else. Um, we have a combination um, I wish we had them all in a central location. Um, so it, it, make, it does make it hard to find things sometimes. Um, I have uh, a SQL, I have to run a SQL to, to find where content references actually reside to go find them and make copies of them, um, which I have at the end of my um, presentation if, in case it's helpful to anyone else, but I'll just put that out there. I'll also say um, the screenshots I have here are creating a navigation collection or modifying a navigation collection from within structure and content. Um, this is one way to do it. There is, um, you can also do it through um, the navigation collection utility, um, which is what was covered in the presentation I mentioned yesterday of how to make a navigation collection in 15 minutes. And that's probably the easier way to do a nav collection from, um, from scratch. So um, I, I do like being able to go into structure and content because you can do just about anything there and some things that you can't do in the um, navigation collection utility. But, um, but it's good to know that both, both ways exist. Um, so as I mentioned, if it exists, it's better to create a, a link in the navigation collection. Um, and that way everything is filled out for you except for the unique link name. You can see um, 
normally I just make you you may have your own naming convention, but for links I usually just put underscore L and K at the end um, of the target name. And then you can copy or override the target content reference attributes. Um, so if you if it if the main content reference that you're um, pointing to already has an image and you like it, great. If you don't, then you can always um, set a new one. Um, on these, since it, it's local, PeopleSoft is going to know what the security is for the target, and it will automatically um, set the security to be the same as, as the target content reference. But you can view it on the security tab. Another element that we used a lot, um, well, I, I should say not a lot, we used it a couple times, um, is links to other related tiles. Um, so here we have a total reward statement tile, and it mainly exists to showcase total reward statements, um, but there was a desire to link it to pay and benefits without kind of muddying up pay and benefits. So we wanted to have um, the, the way we accomplished that was to go ahead and create a total reward statement tile, um, but include links to the My Pay tile and the My Benefits tile as um, related information. So if you click on My Pay, it opens up the My Pay tile, and if you click on My Benefits, it opens the My Benefits tile, just as a reminder that um, you know your pay and benefits are part of your total rewards package. Um, so the way we did that was just by creating those, um, creating content reference links to the pay and benefits tiles. Um, and then we used attributes to say, replace the window. So we didn't want the new tile to come up um, within this navigation collection. We wanted it to completely replace the existing navigation collection. Um, the next common element that we used to kind of unify the presentation across HCM um, finance and supply chain. Um, again, the, the main way that employee self-service and manager self-service users interact with finance and supply chain is, um, is through expense reports. So um, whether it's you know creating or modifying them or approving them, um, we that was that's the main traffic that the regular end user um, needs to access finance and supply chain for. So we created on the MyHR um, homepage, we created a tile um, for expense reports, and we have um, everything related to expense reports grouped by um, grouped logically. Um, it's actually not just expense reports; it's also payment requests, recurring payments, AP inquiries. Um, so anything, we ended up putting anything related to finance and supply chain into this tile, but the main driver was expense reports. So on this one, in the content reference, you would pick the remote node of, um, of ERP, use a PeopleSoft generic URL, and then the URL of the page in the remote environment, starting with C and appended with the name of this content reference. Um, so you can see, this portal URL, everything up to um, and SC underscore ID is the um, the actual URL of the finance and supply chain um, dysfunctionality in finance and supply chain. And then the SC ID, this starting with ADMN, is the name of this content reference. Um, so uh, something that can be a little bit of a gotcha here is that you have to set the security um, since HCM doesn't know like what the security is on this generic URL, um, so you'll want to make sure you are not conflicting in your security between this content reference and the remote target, or people will just, I mean, if somebody clicks on it, they'll get a not authorized. Um, so you just want to make sure you're only showing it to people that are going to have the access to get to that content in um, finance and supply chain. Um, another example, of remote and local content coexistence with finance of HCM as well as finance and supply chain is our reporting tile. Um, work list is another one. We have um, transactions um, from both um, finance. Well, I guess that's actually a little different. We have all of our transactions there. So never mind, scratch that. 
um, this tile we have HCM report manager and finance and supply chain report manager since they show up in different spots. Um, it, we also have HCM query viewer. Um, we could have put finance and supply chain query viewer, but there really wasn't the need for it, so we didn't. Um, related external links are OBIE, and we have a report form, request a report form in service now that we linked to. And then we also have a um, the help and FAQ, which is like a quick reference guide repository. Which one of my favorite things actually is those um, those iHub content folders. So, and we use this pretty extensively throughout the environment to put those folders at the bottom of the tiles with the related policies and the related quick reference guides. Um, so with these, we're pointing to content references in iHub, and we typically made them content management folders. So the actual navigation collection link is pointing to a content management folder. And that way, the content within the folder can be managed by the business users that have content management access. So they don't have to um, come to the ERP team or a developer to say, I need to add a document. Um, that was especially important for policies because HR policies get updated all the time. Um, new policies get added. And sometimes they're very time sensitive and they need to be posted right away. So, um, and then with the quick reference guides too, it allows us to um, to give the business the ability to manage those um, those directly, so they have that functional context. Um, so the way that we did this is we created the content management folder um, that was going to correspond to this tile, um, put all the content in that folder, and then when we created this content reference um, on the URL information, again we have the remote node. Um, is the iHub node. And then on the portal URL, I have that listed here. It's the content management URL where the um, this CATGID number, 2259 in this case, is the folder ID of the target folder. So the folder that you want to have open over here on the right. Um, and then content management can also be used to create HTML documents that can be updated by business users with content management permissions. Um, we don't, we haven't used this heavily, mostly because I, I think I mentioned earlier, we have a, an issue um, where we're not able to access iHub content outside of the network. And we don't want to have um, pages that don't work outside of the network. So content management is one thing, but um, actual links here, um, we really want those um, to work. So um, like in this example, the payroll contact information um, was subject to change fairly frequently. Um, so we ended up making that an HTML document that can be maintained by a business user without development that has um, the payroll phone number, fax number, email, and, and mail stop. And um, the way we set that up, again, is very similar to that um, folder, but we have, um, I, oh, I have the URL there where the content ID is this number. Um, and there's some other stuff in the, the URL that, that does things like set a title um, for it as well. Um, and then we also have um, another, the last kind of common element that we use quite a bit in navigation collections is non-PeopleSoft URLs. So these are used to link to relevant content outside of the system. And again, you'll want to decide whether to create these in a central location and link to them from the navigation collections or create them directly in the navigation collection. If you think about you know, these um, benefits related ones, we um, link to them in several different places. Like um, we have manager, a manager tile that has to do with benefits and we have an employee tile and we have an HR tile that has to do with benefits. Um, so they, and they all link to the BJC Total Rewards website. So we had to decide, um, we ended up deciding on a um, central folder to maintain external links 
Um, so the link get the, the content reference gets created there and then we link to it from the navigation collection. And that way if it ever changes it, we only have to change it in one place. So um, the outcome of our transition was to go from um, these three uh, classic kind of disparate um, home pages to a unified fluid um, environment where you have the same um, set of home pages no matter where you are. Um, we do plan to take additional enhance related enhancements in the future. Um, we plan to enable Classic Plus. We haven't done that yet um, to further unify the appearance of the application. So that I think we think that'll be a good intermediate step. So that um, you know, even though we're not going to get rid of all of our classic pages overnight, and some of um, uh, some of them, you know, we have some custom pages that we would have to convert ourselves. Those might be um, a long time coming. But in the meantime, um, we can go to Classic Plus um, to make at least make things look more similar as we work on um, more and more fluid pages. We do plan to adopt more of the delivered fluid pages and eventually also convert our custom pages to either um, to fluid or to classic plus as, um, as the need dictates. We also want to do more with related content and related actions. Um, I think that's kind of the next, um, next uh, iteration, I guess I would say, of um, putting the content at the user's fingertips and putting um, related content close to where they're actually doing the transaction. Um, I think that would be even better than having those content management folders. Um, and then home, page, home pages and tiles for additional administrative functional users like um, compensation, HR help desk, et cetera, that have um, more more back office functions um, to get there so that they don't have to rely so much on favorites, recents, and navigator. Um, so I have my contact information here. I'm going to open it up to questions in just a second. I did want to point out a couple things I have here in the appendix in case they're helpful to anyone. They're super helpful to me. Um, I had a lot of trouble finding images for tiles um, and how to like whenever you go into the tile wizard, I found it hard to know like what image do I want. I'm, I, I want to use the delivered images. I don't want to have to have my creative department um, come up with all new tiles, um, but I want to make our tiles. So um, I have I found this trick to browse images through um, like pretending to create a navigation collection. And you might, if you're already creating navigation collections here, you might already be familiar with it, but this is the best way I found to um, search for fluid images. Um, basically just update that to um, name containing FL and then sort by size. Um, it's not foolproof, but it does get you a lot of images to choose from. Um, I also mentioned uh, trying to find the content references that are already built in the portal registry. Um, I have some SQL here that helps you build the path. And then I also have some common attributes to know for navigation collection links. I find myself using these a lot. Um, one of them sets the image on the nav collection link. Again, if you're using the, um, the navigation collection utility, you might not care about this. Um, but if you're creating through structure and content, um, it may be helpful. But, and then there's one that forces the link to open a new, in a new window or stay in the same window, and one that forces the link to replace the current window. And that is the end of my slides. Does anybody have any questions or, or want to go back and look at anything? I'm not, I don't think I see any questions in the chat other than that people couldn't hear me at the beginning. Hopefully that stayed better. I'll go back to my contact info. If you have, um, if you do think of questions, um, feel free to reach out and thanks for your time.